um, about the temperature and how we can measure the temperature of the objects. Um, the tools that we uh, use to measure the temperature of the different environments or different places are made based on uh, this definition that any kind of the property of the matter that changes with the temperature can be used to make a thermometer. For example, those properties of the matter is that it can change with the temperature or expansion in the solid, liquid and gas, or it can be electrical resistance uh, in which uh, the resistance of a wire, length of the wire can change with temperature or it can be changing the color and many other things. They use these properties uh, of the matters to make uh, thermometers or any devices that we can measure temperature. So uh, an example of these uh, tools are thermometers and thermocouples that I would uh, after this explain to you further what they are and how do they work. The unit of the temperature is Kelvin shown by sim a symbol K and Celsius degrees which is um, shown by this symbol. The conversion of this unit is, I mean, each zero degree uh, Celsius, um, as you can see on the diagram, if this is a thermometer, which is um, measures the temperature in Celsius, and this one measures the temperature in Kelvin, so if you compare these two together, you see that a zero Kelvin, the zero on the, this uh, thermometer, equals to minus 273 Celsius. The zero Celsius on this thermometer, zero Celsius also equals to 273 Kelvin. So it means that if zero degree Kelvin equals to minus 273 Celsius. So you can use this equation to work out the temperature in a Celsius. Temperature in Kelvin minus 273.15 equals to temperature in Celsius. Now let's see how the liquid in glass thermometer uh, works and how this structure is. Um, in the liquid liquid in glass thermometers, we have this kind they have this kind of structure somehow very similar to each other. This is an example of the mercury actually in glass thermometer. He said that a thermometer is a um, glass tube which is completely sealed and inside there is a bowl which is sealed and um, it is filled with a liquid. The liquid can be mercury or can be alcohol, two types of the liquids they use. Um, it has a very fine bore which is inside inside the thermometer. Um, for the mercury thermometers, there is one constriction here that doesn't let the mercury to go, goes back into the bowl. So for the alcohol one, they don't have this constriction. The liquid tops are alcohol and mercury. There are some advantages with them or some disadvantages for each. So um, alcohol has this kind of the properties that it has a very low boiling point. So it's not very suitable to be used at a very hot places. The reason is that it stops boiling before it reaches to 100 Celsius. So uh, the, bo the boiling point of the alcohol is very low, lower than the boiling point of the water, usually 78, around 78 Celsius. So the alcohol, uh, thermometers, um, they are not toxic. I mean, this liquid is not toxic and uh, it is colorless, so you have to add a dye or color so that it can be seen easily. Another property of the alcohol, it has a very higher expansion, I mean, six times higher than the mercury, so um, it is another advantage about alcohol. Uh, using it as a liquid in a thermometer. But if you use mercury in a the thermometer, it comes 
to this kind of the properties that it has a very high boiling point. So um, it is naturally colored, so you do not need to add any color or dye to color it. And the expansion of it is even with the temperature changes and other advantage of it. And it's this poisonous, this is a kind of poisonous uh, object, so uh, matter. So you have to be very careful, it is broken. Uh, you have to take some uh, precautions for this how, when you are using it. So it is not suitable to be used in a very cold place as because it will get uh, frozen and it becomes solid in a very uh, low temperatures. Now at the next part, we have thermocouples. Thermocouples, um, there are two different wires, I mean, from the different materials. There are um, from both, there are two ends. They have actually been wrapped together, they have been tied together. And when there are these two junctions, they are placed in a, a different, for example, places that they have different temperatures. This difference in the temperature causes uh, a voltage to be formed here. So the difference between the, these two junctions of the wires, they cause um, a very small amount of electricity to be created here. And this causes a voltage difference. The voltage difference can be measured by using the galvanometer or voltmeter or ammeter here. So you can measure the voltage difference between these two junctions by using a, a, a voltmeter or a galvanometer. Um, then after that, you can translate this voltage or uh, the resistance back into the temperature by um, bringing it onto the calibration curve or calibration table. So easily you can know what is the difference between the temperatures of these places. So these two wires, they, have they are made of different materials. For example, one can be copper dye one can be iron. They are joined together at the two points here and one junction is placed in a uh, liquid or in a place that you want to measure its temperature and the other junction is placed in a cold, uh, very cold place like if, uh, like the, for example, ice, which is zero centigrade degrees. So the difference between these two uh, temperatures uh, will be translated back into voltage on the voltmeter or galvanometer. Then you can find the temperature by bringing this uh, value on the uh, calibration curve. All of you, you know how to uh, measure time and how to calculate it. <clears throat> so, in order to measure time, we have some tools uh, like timer, clock, stopwatch, or pendulum. The units of the time is hour. It can be hour, which is equal to uh, 16 minutes, and it can be also second. H1 minute is equal to 60 seconds. So overall, each one hour will be uh, equal to 3,600 seconds. On the next part, we have uh, to talk about pendulum, which is a uh, ball, uh, which is kind of actually attached to a fixed point, and it moves forward and backward. Each one, uh, which is if it when it's tossed. From the original place, it goes forward and come back to its original place again. It becomes one complete oscillation. It's considered a one complete oscillation. So if you count the number of the oscillations and the time taken for them, you can calculate the period. So the period means the time taken over the number of the oscillations done in that time. 
And this part, we have length, this quantity, and the unit is uh, measured in kilometers, meters, centimeter, and millimeter. We have multiple units, but the ones that I use here and we have in this uh, following lessons and we are working with is this, uh, these units. How to convert them? Each one kilometer is 1,000 meters, and one meter equals to 100 centimeter. So one centimeter also is equal to 10 millimeter. So overall, one kilometer contains one, 10 um, power 6 millimeters. Uh, the tools that we use to measure uh, the length or distance between the two points is a ruler meter, vernier caliper, or it can be micrometer screw gauge. I don't want to talk about it on the next part of the video that how we can use vernier or micrometer to uh, measure uh, uh, the distance between two points.